Hello everyone, welcome back to iRacing and we're going straight down to the grid for highlights of what turned out to be a disastrous start to my racing week. We're in the Formula 3 car at Phillip Island. Now we started from 7th on the grid, so qualifying was pretty encouraging, but sadly this race is not going to last long. We're on the inside line for T1, but that means we're going to be on the outside for this longer sweeping T2. Now I'm already starting to panic because there's cars on the inside of me. I try to give them some space, but we just get out onto the grass and once we're out there, we can't stop, we can't steer, and we career into the tyre wall. A ridiculously embarrassing mistake, this one. I've got nobody to blame but myself, and within 20 seconds of the lights going green, we have absolutely totaled the car. So much so that when we returned to the pits and finished the tow, we got the devastating news that the damage was so bad, they weren't even going to attempt to repair it. So while my pit crew were off enjoying a pasty and a pint, we had to mull over an I-rating plunge of 101. That is the single biggest drop I think I've ever experienced in iRacing. The only blessing from that mistake was that I didn't take anyone else with me, but if you've seen the title of this video, you'll know that I'm not going to be so fortunate in this second race. If you thought I was embarrassed after race one, you ain't seen nothing yet. Poor Pablo Lamas, he's the driver alongside me on screen at the moment. He's going to have his race ruined due to one of my most careless and foolish mistakes yet. But we'll get on to that in a minute. First, the qualifying. And um, we've actually put ourselves way further up the grid this time. We're going to be starting on row two, qualifying in fourth with a time of 124.2. And that grid position is going to put us on the outside for T1. But more importantly, we're going to be on the inside for T2. So hopefully that'll help us avoid a repeat of the error from race one. And as the lights go green, Victor Checker right in front of us was really sluggish off the start. We thought for a moment about switching to the inside to get around him, but I thought better of it just with that turn two in mind. I want to stay out wide around this first turn. And that strategy, of course, opened up a gaping hole on the inside. That's allowed Pablo Lamas to get through. He started just behind me, fifth on the grid. Well, he's moved up to third. We've maintained fourth position. It looks like Jorgen Jakobsen that we got around. Jakobsen was alongside us on row two. He started from third, but he's now down to fifth. We're in fourth and we're chasing Pablo Lamas as we approach this heavy braking zone. Oh, we've left it too late. We locked up and we've run into the back of Lamas. Oh, no. I got completely caught out there by the earlier braking. Now we're going to have to wait for Lamas to rejoin. That's the least we can do. But I've ruined his race and I've ruined my own. We're going to rejoin in dead last position, 15th. Although we have gained one back already. Sean Stevens was on the infield. There's another car on the grass out wide there. So we will get two positions back. But that was a complete disaster. I'm going to have to cover my eyes while we check out this replay. Yeah, it's by far the worst feeling in sim racing when you've just torpedoed someone and ruined their race. And that's exactly what happened here. I knew I'd have to break earlier than usual on lap one, but I didn't break early enough. I locked up and careered right into the back of poor Pablo there. Now, I don't use voice comms on iRacing, so I wasn't able to say sorry to Pablo straight away on audio, but I did write him a groveling apology immediately after the race. Riding on board with him here, you can see he's done nothing wrong, but he's punted out of third position and that's ruined his race. Now, the least anyone can do when you do something like this is to let the driver you've just hit rejoin first. So that's exactly what I did. I was in no hurry to rejoin here. I wanted to make sure Pablo got back on track first. So we had no choice but to rejoin at the very back in 15th position. However, we did gain two places straight away. Sean Stevens was the other driver who got into all sorts of trouble around this hairpin. It looks like a case of cold tyres and getting on the gas a bit too early, he loses the rear. So that's one position back where we rejoined just there. And then at the very next corner, Max Muiz missing his breaking point and running into that deep Phillip Island sand. So we know we're in 13th position because there's only two cars behind us on track. Pablo, meanwhile, was able to rejoin in 10th, but I'm just hoping that he hasn't picked up any rear wing damage from that shunt. Uh, we've got someone off track ahead, so we might get another position back here, and we will do. Oh, no, it's Pablo. Oh, do you know what? I'm worried that he's run off track because of damage caused by me hitting him, so I can't in good conscience keep going. I'm going to have to slow down and let him pass again. It's going to cost us loads of time, that slowing down on the fastest part of the track, but it just felt like the decent thing to do, particularly if it was damage caused by me. However, the yellow flags are out. We may get some positions back here. There are at least two cars out there on the grass. So although we surrendered one place back to Pablo, we've gained two more, so that should put us up to 11th. And we've got Pablo right in front of us again. I'm certainly not going to make the same mistake this time approaching the hairpin. We're going to be really cautious on the brakes. Pablo's made it up the inside of Lars Holders, who then proceeds to spin right in front of us. Thankfully, we were able to react in time and avoid him. But boy, that was close. 
A quick look at the replay suggests that Pablo managed to escape, picking up any damage from that hit on lap one. And when he ran off track at the end of the lap, it was actually caused by him trying to avoid Ronnie Sewell in front. However, at the time, I didn't know that. I feared that he ran off track due to the damage caused by me hitting him. So when I breezed past him on the start-finish straight, I felt I had to do the decent thing and pull aside to let him back through. However, it wasn't long before we gained a bunch of positions. This is Lars Alders at turn two on lap two. He loses the rear. He's lucky not to get hit there. Oh, but the driver behind wasn't so lucky. This was John Dobson riding on board with him now. Nowhere to go. He tries to squeeze through, but it puts him out of the race. I can sympathise with him there. The same thing happened to us multiple times last week. And Ronnie Sewell was the other driver there out on the grass. That was another position gained. And then we had to react really quickly to avoid Alders. Alders just coming out of the hairpin. Loses the rear spectacularly. Spins right around. Thankfully, we're able to get by him. Well, those incidents really spread the field out. By the end of lap three, we were in a pretty lonely 10th position. We've still got Pablo in front of us, but he's more than one and a half seconds further up the road in ninth. However, at the end of the next lap, lap four, this is Gaten Imhoff, currently in fourth place, but he's going to get out onto the grass on the penultimate corner and spin right out. But the big question is, is he going to be able to rejoin before we get there? Well, we're approaching the incident now. We can see the car in front. He's moved to the outside of the track and he is rejoining now, but he's going to be well down on speed on this start-finish straight, so he should be able to breeze past. We won't even need to pick up a draft. We're carrying a lot more speed and we get past so that promotes us up to ninth position as we start the fifth lap of this race. We're not even at one third distance yet. There's a lot of time still to go, so there's all to play for. However, we're no longer in a lonely position. We have got Inhoff right behind us now. He's back up to speed, and we know from the fact that he was running in fourth position that he's got a lot of pace. So we may have our work cut out here to hold on to this position. Meanwhile, in front, it looks like Pablo Lamas is beginning to pull away just a little bit. That gap up to 2.2 seconds now. Him off having a look up the inside into the hairpin. Meanwhile, the yellow flags are out. There's a car off on the grass to the left. That looks like Jaden Young, who was running in fifth position. Thankfully, Imhoff thought better of the move up the inside. We've all got through that hairpin okay. But with Young having spun out, that's promoted us up to 8th position. How long we're going to stay there, I don't know. Because Imhoff looks like he's got the pace to take this position back. He certainly showed his intent in that hairpin. We managed to hold on to the position. We're going to have to try and do the same again through this tricky downhill section. It's so easy to lose it on the brakes here when the camber drops off. We hold the inside line and it looks like Imhoff's run wide. He has managed to keep it on the track just, but that will have cost him big time. We've now got two seconds of breathing room and we're going to end this fifth lap in eighth position. Yeah, there's hardly any grip in this hairpin. It's so easy to lose it. And that's exactly what Jaden Young did here, losing the rear on entry. Meanwhile, we had Imhoff pursuing us behind. I was worried he might make a move in this downhill section, but in fact, he ran a little bit wide, just getting a bit squirrely on the brakes there. And all of a sudden, we get a nice bit of breathing room. Jumping forward a couple of laps now, we rejoin the live action on lap seven. And as you can see from the leaderboard, we're losing a bit more ground on Pablo Lamas. He's now 2.8 seconds clear. And behind, Gerton Imhoff is beginning to close in again. We've got a yellow flag once again at this hairpin. Who's come to grief here now? It's Sean Gray. Gray was in fifth position, so that is another place gained for us. We are slowly clawing our way back through this pack here at Phillip Island. So we're up to seventh place, but we've now got exactly the same problem that we had a couple of laps ago with Inhoff. Now we've got Sean Gray on our tail instead. He's rejoined right behind us. We know he's got pace because he was one of the front runners. So we're going to have to be at our best here to try and defend this position. Gray has a look up the inside around this fast left-hander. Thankfully, he thinks better of it. We're now breaking into the downhill section. We're running in a bit too deep. And that makes it even harder to get the car turned in, but we managed to do it without clipping the curb or the grass. But it's a really tricky section, that one. The elevation changes dramatic and quick. If you're on the brakes when the track drops off, it feels like the car wants to take off, and it's so easy to lose grip. Well, we've got a big problem here now because Gray is right in our draft. There's so much extra speed to be had here. He's going to move to the inside. However, I'm going to try and keep it pinned around the outside because if we can bravely hold on, we'll have the inside line for T2. We've managed to do it. There's a little bit of contact as we try to hold the tight line. But for now, we've held on to this seventh position. This is Gray making a move up the inside into the hairpin. Is there going to be contact? No, there isn't. He has to lock up to avoid the clash, and that's what spins him around. 
And then at the end of the lap, we had to be really brave here to hold on to the position. We knew Gray was going to have a lot of extra speed using that toe. He moves to the inside into T1, but we keep it pinned. We stay firmly on the gas, running it around the outside just so we can hold that defensive line on the inside into T2. And there's the contact. Thankfully, Gray kept it on the track. The last thing I want in this race is another murder on my conscience. Here's the same incident again from the chopper cam. Now we're holding the inside line here. Do we drift out into Gray's path? We do a little bit, and that's what causes the contact. Well, now, not only have we got to deal with Sean Gray, we've also got to deal with Gaten Inhofe because he's taken full advantage of our battle through this lap to close right in. We've got Gray 0.5 of a second behind and Inhofe less than one second behind. So we're under real pressure here. And it might be beginning to show because we run a little bit wide on the exit of that right hand and we clip the curb. That is going to invite Sean Gray to have a real challenge coming down this start-finish straight again. And he's even closer than he was this time a lap ago. Look at him in the rear view mirror swarming all over us like a wasp on a coke can as we go flat out down this start finish straight he moves to the inside we've got no choice but to try and do exactly the same again and hold this outside line it's not going to work this time he had the extra speed and he's taken the position but at least by running out wide through that first turn, we've got the inside line through t2 that should block off any possible way through for gates and inhoff behind However, our route through that turn was compromised. We weren't able to get on the gas as quickly as I would have liked. And we're going to come under attack here from Inhofe. I'm fairly sure of it as we approach this hairpin. Look at Gray lock up. He's surely going to lose it. No, he's managed to hold on to it. But now we are right back on his tail and it's going to be Gray's turn to deal with the pressure. Look how close things are getting though. Jaden Young's going to join in the battle as well. There's four cars separated by about one and a half seconds. The big challenge for us now is to try and get as close as we possibly can to Gray. The start finish straight seems like the best opportunity to make a pass on this circuit. So let's do everything we can to stick with him here. We've got to keep one eye on the rear view mirror as well. Because Inhofe looks like he wants to be a part of this. But he's lost it. He's lost it into that right hander. And has he taken Jaden Young with him too? Such a fast overtake this was. Gray tucking it up the inside. We're both flat out on the rev limiter in sixth gear, but Gray had the extra speed from that toe. And then at the end of the lap, we lost Gaten Inhoff. He just loses traction right there as the track drops off, and that causes him to spin. White manages to avoid him. We're definitely quicker than Gray through this section of the track, and as long as we can keep the car stable down this drop off, we should be okay to be right on his tail coming out of the last turn. That will give us an opportunity to try and claw this position back down the start finish straight. We may not be close enough. What's the gap? 0.4 of a second. I would have preferred to be right on his tail if I'm honest with you like he was on me a couple of laps ago. But we're going to get some draft here. The big question is whether we're going to get enough of it to get the speed needed to pull alongside before T1. We're getting closer. He's going to defend on the inside. So we're going to go wide. Have we got the speed to carry it around the outside? The answer is no, we haven't. And once again, we break just a little bit earlier into this T2. I'm really nervous around here, particularly after what happened in race one. Oh, we get a little bit wide on exit and just clip the gravel. The car almost lost control. That was a wake up call. And that little mistake cost us some valuable tens there. We spent the next lap and a bit trying to claw our way back onto the tail of Gray. But we were going to get another freebie as we approach the end of lap 12 because the driver in fifth place, Yves Cesar, has become the latest victim of this downhill slope. He's there on the right. He's going to try and rejoin and spin again. Thankfully, we just get by without being collected. But yeah, that was a moment of panic right there. And as a result of just easing off the gas to make sure I got past Cesar safely, that's cost us another couple of tenths. We're now 0.6 of a second behind Sean Gray. We're nowhere near close enough to make a move into T1 at the start of lap 13. And with Cesar spinning out, we have been promoted back up to seventh position and we are gradually closing in on Sean Gray. We know that we're faster than him around the back part of the circuit, so hopefully we might be in a position at the end of the lap to make a move. There's been an accident though. Gray had to take avoided action and that has completely wiped out his advantage. We are right back on his tail now. We'll check out the replay in a minute to see what happened with that incident, but it looks like Henrik Svan and poor Pablo Lamas who crashed out. They were battling for fourth position, so with those two drivers out, we have gained two places here. Sean Gray is now up to fourth, and we are up to fifth. 
So that's three positions gained in a short space of time. Started with Cesar. Look at him get it all wrong coming through that turn. He's out onto the grass coming down the hill. Thankfully, he manages to get it stopped before sliding onto the track. But yeah, we're able to get by without getting collected, thankfully. And then at the start of the next lap, this is Hendrik's van in fourth position. He's going to get a nudge from behind by Pablo Lamas. So that's going to send both of them out. We're on board now with Lamas. He got nudged off track by me on lap one. And now he's done exactly the same thing to Svan. And he's going to end up in exactly the same tyre wall as I did in race one too. So we're under no pressure at all from behind now. The nearest driver is Yves Cesar and he's more than eight seconds back in sixth position. So our sole focus now for these final three laps is closing down Sean Gray and hopefully getting past him. We're in his draft and we're on the rev limit and we've got a lot more speed. Is it going to take us through the inside into T1? Not quite. Gray shuts the door and now switches to the inside defensive line into T2. So all we can do is tuck ourselves in behind him here and stay as close as possible. It felt like the wider apex we took gave us a little bit more exit speed out of that corner. 0.3 of a second is the gap. I don't think we're close enough to try and move up the inside into the hairpins. So we'll stay tucked in behind. Oh, and Gray locks up a little bit there. I'm hoping that might give us a bit of an advantage, but we get a bit loose on exit out of the hairpin, and that means it's advantage Gray again. He's extended the gap a little bit now. It's 0.7 of a second, so we were slower through that section, but we are approaching the part of the track that we know we're stronger at. Let's see if we can close right in on him through this upcoming sweeping left-hander. And if we can, we need to be super sharp going down the hill. We can't miss this apex at the bottom of the drop. We need to get right on his tail. He's run a little bit wide. That really is going to help us out because now we are on Gray's tail. And we're going to be in the perfect position to pounce down the start-finish straight. This is the closest we've been to him through the final turn. So we're going to be in a great position here. We're going to get loads of extra speed from the toe. The question is, is he going to go left or right? Is he going to defend turn one or is he going to make me go up the inside? It looks like he might make us go up the inside. So we're going to have to be brave here. It's full throttle on the rev limiter. We're going to have to have enough speed to make this pass stick before we get to T2. And it looks like we've done it. I was fully preparing for Gray to attack up the inside into T2, but we managed to get just far enough ahead to force him to back out, and that has put us up to fourth position with two and a half laps left at Phillip Island. Well, who on earth would have thought we'd have been battling for fourth place on lap one when we rejoined in last position, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The job is certainly not done yet, although we've just had a real big favour because Gray has run wide at the hairpin. Here's a replay of the pass and it's almost a carbon copy move of the pass that Gray made on me earlier in the race. We had plenty of time to get alongside. We get our noses in front even before we're turning into T1 and that's what gives us the advantage to hold on to the position. We're up to fourth and then we get a little bit of breathing room when Gray locks up going into the hairpin. Well, we've got a 1.2 second advantage and this is where we can gain an extra few tenths because we know we're quicker than Gray through here as long as we get it spot on. We do hit the apex. Let's get on the gas early. Oh, and in the rear view mirror, Gray's gone. Gray spun out at the bottom of the hill and that's pretty much sewn up fourth place for us. We've only got two laps to go and we are clear. Yeah, Gray's looked a little bit shaky through this section on several occasions and he was just pushing a little bit too hard here. Breaks a little bit too late into this right-hander and the rear steps out. He's carrying a bit too much corner speed. So there we have it. After a really intense race, we had a fairly leisurely last two laps after Gray span out. And amazingly, we're going to cross the line to take fourth position. It hasn't quite undone the damage caused by race one, but we have put 47 back on the I rating. And we've even had a little bit of an increase to our safety rating too. So as we call up the classified results, once again, I've got to plead for forgiveness with Pablo Lamas. Pablo, if by any chance you're watching this, I'm so sorry for that error on lap one. It was 100% my fault and I tried my best to make it right at the time by giving the position back twice. But I know how frustrating it can be when someone rear ends you like that. So I do apologise. And to everyone else, I thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please do leave a like and let me know what you thought of the race. And we'll be back on track again very soon where hopefully I'll get through the whole race without murdering anyone.